This video is going to be a film study slash roster projection in terms of the one position on the Ravens offense and maybe the entire roster that kind of has a trickle down, trickle up, or sideways effect on so many other positions. Uh, not just Pat Ricard, but the fullback position in general for the Ravens offense, how it's going to be used. We, we know in 2019 and 2020 there were tight ends used as fullbacks. That's kind of what the NFL is going to in terms of 11 personnel. Um, you got one more preseason game tonight in terms of before the, before the front office has to get down to the 53-man roster. Every team in the league does, and there's going to be good players cut across the league. I used to think that personally, I think that Pat Ricard's salary and the positional value in terms of how often he's going to be used in this offense – Prior to the first two preseason games, I thought he was going to get cut. I thought he wouldn't be a guy that would be that important. But after watching the offense and and finally getting to have the offense in individual plays so that I could watch them in quick succession in terms of one continuous video file, uh, Pat Ricard and Ben Mason have been used all over the place. And to me, the film shows, particularly the Washington game, shows that how they're being used is, is, is how they're going to be used in a regular season. And when I say they, I mean the fullback. Um, I do think he'll make the team. I, I did not think that as of two days ago or maybe even 36 hours ago. I was finally able to get the Washington offense cut into the database and start to label it. Uh, you know, do you guys agree? I thought as of, like I said, about two days ago that I thought he was going to get, he would not be a part of the 53-man roster. I thought we would keep as many tight ends, running backs, receivers as possible. And I also think the offense retaining a fullback um, – in some ways has an effect on the defense, the guys who we can keep on the defense. So I think those things are all related. I don't think it's just a fullback issue. You know, do you think that the fullback is going to be a big enough part of the Ravens' offensive game plan that it justifies keeping Pat Ricard on the 53? You may, you may disagree with me now. You may have disagreed with me two days ago. Um, after watching the film and seeing how often – and the, and the multitude of ways they're being used, I'm going to try to convince you that I think I already know that Pat Ricard will be on the team. And there's people who've been saying that all along, so now I believe they were right. Um, let's be honest, though. 11 personnel is the predominant usage for this team through two games. Now, we're going into the third game tonight against the Bucks. Right now I have 83 plays completely charted with all the information in my database. Down, distance, personnel, formation – play concept, or, you know, run pass, play concept, direction, gain, all of that is all in my database, so I have it. I wanted to do an offense film study utilizing that data for this morning, Saturday morning, but I was unable to get that done. So I think what I'll do is just try to get the data from Saturday night and put that out as a Sunday morning stream or, or Sunday morning um, video so people can consume it and talk about what they think they saw in Saturday night's game. Of course, I'll do a reaction video. So look, I have 83 plays completely charted with all information, and I've got 41 of them were 11 personnel. I'm going to get to the film finally. It's a long lead in, but I've, I wanted to address uh, what I thought personally previously and what I think I see now in terms of his usage. Uh, we'll get to some of the film, like I said. And, uh, I only have data for weeks one and two, obviously the preseason, but there's enough holdover concepts for me here to think or recognize that I think Ricard is on the team, even though um, he's playing with some guys who are, in some cases, you know, on the cusp. But if you look at the guys that are on the field right now, you have multiple guys that you know are on this football team, including, you know, every one of these guys, we would assume. And Ricard's usage is so versatile, I can't imagine that they're, they're not using tight ends to do these things. Let me, let me phrase it this way. Currently, Munkin is not using tight ends to do these things. He's not going to run concepts in the preseason and not ask the tight ends to do things that he's then therefore going to ask them to do in week one and, and forward. I think that this is, these are the things the fullbacks are going to be asked to do, and in this case, I think it's going to be Pat Ricard. This is a formation that uh, Munkin really loves. Trey Wing uh, finally had, I think I've got 17 instances of it in the database through weeks one and two. Uh, you can run it with 21 personnel. You can run it with 12 personnel because essentially here the, the fullback is acting as a tight end. Trey Wing, we would call Trey, 
anytime the tight end was into the trips. There's another receiver off screen here, uh, just so you know. So anytime the tight end was into the trips, Trey Wing means there's a wing into the trips. So you got a tight end and a wing. You know, the wing can be a tight end, it can be a fullback, it can be a halfback. If it's the wing T, you're generally talking about a halfback. So in any, any case, this is a formation that is new for the Ravens that I want to talk about in the offense breakdown. And like I said, I did, in the offense breakdown video, and like I said, I wasn't able to get that prepped for Saturday morning. So this is what I kind of um, altered the plan into. He's being used across the board in the run game. Uh, Justice Hill looks great, by the way, like, I don't know if this is the level of play we're going to see from him in the regular season because of the talent level that he'll be going against, but it certainly looks like Justice Hill is is going to be one of the guys that gets on the field a lot, um, and that for a lot of us is is an unusual happening because of how talented J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are and how accomplished they have been in terms of the Ravens' offense when they've been healthy. Munkin loves the bunch. He loves the bunch, and it's one of the reasons why I think the fullback is going to be used more often, or excuse me, if the fullback is going to be used in the offense less often than in previous years. But you're going to see in a moment here, I'm showing you multiple bunch plays intentionally. The, the player who's in the slot, you know, closest to the right tackle, which the Ravens have often been a bunch right team for, for years under Greg Room, and they still appear to be. To be honest with you, there are a lot of holdover concepts and a lot of holdover usages uh, so far through two games. Having that player be a fullback in, in the Ravens offense can, can actually be a good thing. He can motion back to be in the backfield a fullback, can motion across and apparently play tight end. It looks like they're going to expect Ricard to play tight end, just like Greg Roman did in 2022. Um, again, I, this is something, a conclusion that I came to as I was cutting the video into individual plays in the last two days. The usage all over the place for Ricard. And again, here's an example of him lining up as a wing in a twin wing formation and then motioning over to twin's eye. The versatility that he offers in terms of the versatility that the offense staff thinks he offers, let me put it that way, to me seems to reveal that they're going to use him to go from one formation to the other quickly, and they don't think that any of the tight ends are capable of doing that. Now, I do think that Isaiah likely – uh, when I when we have seen him, looks like a guy who could do some of this stuff. I don't think it's going to be you know Mark Andrews going into the backfield to be a fullback. I don't think it's going to be Charlie Kolar. I, I wouldn't call him a a super high level blocker right now, and I don't think it's going to be Vokalek if he was able to to be retained or kept on the fifty three man roster. You guys, let me know what you think. This is a third and three. This play very this play was very surprising to me. I think Josh Johnson ends up you know going back into the end zone, fading back. And Rick, I'll give you the end zone angle of this too. Ricard ends up being the guy who's open. It's man coverage. And it's despite the linebacker over the middle of the field, like making contact with him, a pretty heavy contact. I'm talking about this linebacker right here. They're playing man free. So you got the free safety in the high hole middle of the field. And you got an inside linebacker responsible for the low hole. Some people, there's all kinds of names for it, but he ends up making contact with Ricard and impeding his route just before the ball was thrown by Josh Johnson. I mean, do I think that Pat Ricard is going to have 10 catches? No, but this is a pretty cool play. I was, I don't know about you, but it surprised me. End zone angle, same play. I'm not, like I said, I'm finally able to get these in my database for the all 22 and then the end zone. So I can see, you know, multiple angles of it and, and then try to label the data as such. There's enough, holdover concepts that look like Greg Roman stuff. This is another one. To the field, uh, I think this one's designed. Now, granted, the D end is going to slam down violently, so this could be a read. He's pinching B gap, so this could actually be a read. You'll get the end zone angle in a moment. But so if this D end was to run up field, it could, you know, very well be a give. When I saw this live, or it should be a give, when I saw this live, I thought this was a called keep and now it looks like to me josh johnson reads the d end and you get it from the end zone angle so you can confirm it and let me know what you think it looks like he reads the d end and sees the d end slide all the way down and then uh, and and this is a play that roman typically ran to the wide side of the field in terms of the give or the keep if he is if he is in fact reading it ricard is going to loop around and go get the front side inside linebacker look at the d end try to slam in b it's an easy read 
for Johnson at that point. With the DN going down, disappearing basically, and now Ricard being assigned to go and loot. That's a that's a Roman concept, but look, everybody's using it these days in the NFL and college football. Everybody's using that concept with with the fullback reading the DN the same way as the quarterback. Uh, nowadays, it's whether they're using it four times a game, six times a game, or ten or twelve. In the case of Greg Roman in in 2019, he was using it 18 or 20 times a game. Uh, another similar usage, you know, to 2022, 2021 is um, is in pass pro. Another thing that I think w would be an interesting element to bring up in terms of whether or not Ricard is re is on the roster, which, like I said, I now think he will be, is his lack of injury history. He's been a guy who's been available all the time. And if you're trying to be multiple, you're trying to be versatile in terms of what personnel groups you're using and how versatile you can be in a given week, you need someone who's available. And Ricard, to my knowledge, hasn't missed that many games. There's certainly more to it than that in terms of trying to predict whether he makes the roster. But this is a play that I think can show you the positional versatility in terms of this could be 21 personnel. It's it's not. It's 12. Here you got Charlie Kolar, and there you got Vokalek. That could very easily be a fullback up top there. Rick Hart playing tight end. This is one of the same side runs that I talked about in another video. So where you, you have the running back on the left, and he's going to go downhill. Essentially, he's not crossing the face of the quarterback, at, you know, for like a stretch concept or or maybe – you know, a, a bang it inside zone concept. He has the option here to go straight downhill and he gets some pretty good movement by the tight end, the left guard and the left tackle. I think it's like an eight yard gain. So my point is you can put Ricard, it seems like they're putting Ricard on the field and using him to get into multiple different formations, try to be less predictable. Uh, Cause you, as you know, I'm, I'm big on talking about formations and the data and what's the percentage of run pass in each formation, what's the percentage of run to to the right, to the strong side, to the left, to the weak side? And and I think that defenses memorize those things. And, and the only reason I say that with such um, force is because I've done it myself um, at the high school level and now trying to watch the Ravens and understand what they're doing under Todd Monk, and I'm still doing it. And I'm trying to bring you the information that I think um, teams might be using to look at. Ricard could certainly be that tight end over there where Vokalek is. There hasn't been a lot of 12 personnel so far. I do have that data. I'll, I'll reveal it in the. I'll reveal all of it in the Sunday morning video. I've got five instances of twelve personnel through the two games. Of course, we're leading up to the third game. Last one where I talk about Ricard. Now, this is actually not Ricard. This is Ben Mason. This is a Greg Roman holdover. This is the exact same formation, exact same play. Everything is the same. Spread Ram twenty-one personnel because here's a tight end. I think it's Vokalek, and it's just a draw. We tore up last year the Buffalo Bills with this concept with Justice Hill. The Ravens did use it often in 2022. This is a this is an exact replica of the play where you use the the fullback as a lead blocker, give the running back the ability to read it. In this case, Melvin Gordon uh, cuts it back on the backside. I don't think they'd be running these plays in the preseason if they weren't going to run them in the regular season. And, and this also, this is going to be my last point, goes back to the bunch stuff. Munkin uses a ton of bunch. In this case, the platform for the, for the play is the bunch. He's showing them the bunch. It's 21 personnel, so you can see that Washington has a Sam linebacker, a Mike, and a Will. They've got a three inside linebacker structure, so they're in their base defense. Ravens have gone back to a two-back look here. So we can go one back to two back easily with the fullback. Mason's got him blocked up pretty good. And in this case, Gordon decides to cut it back. They're showing enough of this for me to conclude that it's this is what they're going to do in the regular season. Ricard is better than Ben Mason. Of course, he costs a whole lot more. Uh, in my opinion, this looks like the Ravens offense. Last thing, actually, I was my apologies. I said last point is uh, one thing I've talked about multiple times is the is that Munkin is releasing the the back into the boundary late and oftentimes and that's not you know an uncommon thing but all, he, what he's trying to do I believe is get you know clear out routes to clear out space there's not a lot of space for me at the bottom of the screen to draw 
uh, just because of the nature of the ball being on the left hash. But that's illustrative to my point, is that the running back is going into the boundary after checking pass pro. And you can see what's happening is they're getting a guy cleared out of there. They've gotten this linebacker at depth. He's able to get it out to Gordon. We don't get a ton of yards on it, but the, the, we have in a, on a couple of instances, one of which I think was Justice Hill to the top side of the screen. I didn't show it in this cut-up. But Roman had some stuff that Munkin retained or either he was told to retain. The two other concepts that I'll talk about in the video tomorrow, this one was more so focused on Pat Ricard and, and Ben Mason, um, but presumably uh, uh, you would keep Pat Ricard on the roster and not Mason, and, and how much they've been used and the wide variety of the concepts that they've been asked to execute, to me, reveals even going into this game against the Bucks tonight that Pat Ricard's going to be a part of the 53-man roster, and that does have an impact, I think, across the offensive and defensive spectrum. It could impact, impact guys like Keaton Mitchell, Melvin Gordon, uh, Travis Vokalek. It could even impact positions like the interior D-line. You guys let me know what you think of the video, what you think. Uh, the title was a little bit clickbait, a fullback's last stand. I was talking about tonight's game against the Bucks. You know, would the Ravens be getting rid of or, or releasing cutting Pat Ricard um, to get down to the 53 as of about 36 hours ago, like I said a couple times? I was one of those people who personally thought that they would, but the film from the game against Washington kind of confirms some of the stuff that we saw, which is they're going to use the fullback. They're going to use him in multitude of ways. And Pat Ricard looks like the, the guy who can do all of those things. Uh, also, in my video Sunday morning, I'll kind of address something that apparently Merrill Hodge said recently. It's just really short-sighted, talking about pro-style, tradition, traditional pro-style offenses. Uh, it's almost like Merrill Hodge has a 1998 part of his brain and a 2015 part of his brain that are both talking at the same time. Because, like, I don't know if he's noticed, but pro-style offenses is not what's being used now, traditional pro-style offenses. So, in any case, uh, I do not think this is the fullback's last stand. I think Pat Ricard will be part of the 43. You may disagree with me. Uh, I would have a different approach myself, you know, personally, in terms of who I've kept, but I'm not the guy that gets to make those decisions. I'm just telling you the evidence from a week two preseason game against Washington tells me that he's going to be one of the 53 kept. You guys let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link, sharing it on social media to help this video get more reach. I'll do a reaction video tonight after the Bucks game, like always. And then Sunday morning, hope to have a longer video film study look at what Todd Munkin's offense has done, what I think he's trying to accomplish, at least through the three games of the preseason. Appreciate you guys' time.